Filler primers, we all use them. Which ones deserve your cash and which ones belong in the trash? Today we're testing out six different types of filler primers to show you which ones will give you the results that you need to finish your projects efficiently and give you the best results possible. This is part one and it's in today's video, so come check it out. All right, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dead bringing you the highly anticipated filler primer test video. So this is part one. As much as I wanted to do this just in a single video, we all know how much I love to make long videos. And if I was to do this in one video, you wouldn't watch it because it would be so long. Believe me when I tell you this is a very uh, informative uh, part one video. Six different filler primers, putting them through a bunch of different tests, basically rating these filler primers on a one through 10 level. And I kind of rate them in part one, rate them in part two, and then crown a winner uh, at the end of the video of part two. But I don't want to talk anymore because I'm going to do that enough in the video. So without any further ado, let's get into the intro of the video and show you guys what we're working with. This is the filler primer test part one. So here is the lineup for the test. Some of these you may have seen and used, uh, others you may have not, but starting down the line, first we have Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. Second, we have Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 Filler Primer. Krylon 2-in-1 Filler Primer. Duplicolor Refinish Series Filler Primer. Duplicolor 2-in-1 Filler Primer. And Bondo Filler Primer. So without any further ado, let's go. What this test is gonna do is really show a couple components. You know, it's gonna show filling ability. It's gonna show how quick you can sand it, dry time, effects of humidity. I'm in Florida. So you can get something to work in humidity. You can get it to work in any environment, really. I'm even gonna abuse these a little bit and put them on a little bit thicker and see which ones react the best. If any have pitting, if any have cracking, if there's any adhesion issues. We're gonna do some torture tests on it to, to an extent. As far as products that I'm using, these are basically just the feet pieces. So I have the front and back. Um, to each foot so that'll be a nice even uh, comparison. I picked these parts because they're not too curvy. They're generally flat like I don't have to go insanely crazy and try to get it completely smooth and I'm not going to because anybody can take PLA and sand the heck out of it and get rid of the majority of the PLA lines. That's not what this test is about. But I really want to show you guys what fills the best, what sands the easiest, what dries the quickest. That is the reason behind this test. So since I gotta get rolling on these pieces anyways, I figure why not do that? Some of the curved areas, that's really where we're gonna see how well uh, these filler primers actually work. Most important thing in this video too is I'm gonna break down price point. You know, a lot of times people take the cheaper route out, they think it's better and ends up costing them time. It gives them frustration. Uh, these were printed at just a 0.32. So they're not super, super smooth. I know they may look good in, you know, from here and they are, they're not bad, but uh, there are still some PLA lines, some layer lines that we got to knock down. So these are some great candidates. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and sand all these. I'm going to spare you watching me sand, but I'm going to go ahead and hit these all up and then we're going to get laying some filler primer. So let's get started. All right, starting off with the availability rating, Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 Filler Primer. Locally, super easy to pick up. Walmart, Lowe's, lots of stores have it. It is a water-based filler primer, uh, but like I said, it's nice and easy to get. If you're ever in a pinch, you can drive to Walmart, pick it up. Based on the price, it's not too heavy on the wall and the availability, giving it a rating of a 9. Bondo Filler Primer. Can be a little bit difficult to find. It's only local at certain Ace Hardwares. Mostly online though, you can get it six to 14 bucks. It is lacquer based, so it does have a very nice dry time. It does react nice. Uh, but based on the fact that the price is varied, six to $14, depending on where you get it, I'm giving it a rating of 6.5. Duplicolor 2-in-1, uh, kind of similar to the Bondo Filler Primer. It is available locally at Select O'Reilly's. Most of them do have them. It is available all online. It is a lacquer solvent blend based filler primer. So it does have a nice uh, quick dry time genuinely. Um, but yeah, it's the price is kind of all over the place depending on if you can find it locally or not. Based on that, I'm giving it a rating of 7.5. Duplicolor Filler Primer, the Refinish Series, pretty much the same story here. It's available at most O'Reilly's locally. It is available all online. 
Uh, 8 to 13 bucks is a lacquer based, strictly only lacquer based filler primer. So that's a nice quick dry time. Uh, but just because of the fact that the price is kind of, it's varied. There's a $5 swing there. It is available locally in some markets. Overall, I'm giving this an availability rating of 7.5. Krylon 2-in-1 Filler Primer. Uh, again, this is a very easy, very available filler primer that you can pick up. It is very easy on the wallet, typically only costing $3.96 to $4.96. It's available at Walmart. It's available at Home Depot, Lowe's, all over online. It is a water-based filler primer. Great availability, great price, giving this a rating of 10. And lastly, the Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. Again, similar story. It is available locally. Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, uh, pretty easy on the wallet there, uh, $4.96 to $5.96 per can. If you're ever in a pinch, you can grab it. It is a water-based filler primer, but based on the fact that it's a straight filler primer and it's easily available, I'm giving it a nine. So now that we've given these filler primers an availability and a cost rating, let's get these pieces sanded. So here's some of the pieces that I sanded and I treated these all the same. I did a combination of sanding with my palm sander and hitting it up by hand, 120 and 220. Again, I didn't want to completely remove all PLA lines. You can see the knee pads there. There's still a decent amount of, of PLA lines and that's what we want. I want to show you guys the filling ability of these filler primers. So everything got treated all the same. So let's continue on with the test and see what we're working with. Went and sanded the pieces here because this actually does have some, some deeper defects. And the point of this is to really show, you know, how these primers work. So it still does have some pretty deep uh, defects in it. Uh, the red back of the boot here, it still has, you know, some deep defects. Uh, I ended up sanding both of these with just 120 and 220. I didn't want to go crazy and just completely get rid of, you know, every single PLA line. And disclaimer, you shouldn't. Realistically, when you get into, when you sand that heavy, you're going to lose a lot of the integral features, a lot of the definition of the piece. So you don't want to go crazy. You should be using some sort of a glazing putty and filler first after you sand like this. And then filler primer should just be for filling in the really, really minor defects. But we're not doing that in this test. We're, this is this is an intense test. We wanna see how well you know these things can fill. What I'm gonna do is just kind of wipe these pieces off, wipe them down with some isopropyl alcohol, um, and then we'll get into spraying, uh, see how they perform. So we're gonna get things started. All right, so I got the tent set up here and uh, got the fan going. Always make sure you've got uh, proper protection for your body. Ventilator, mask, anything. Uh, you don't want to be breathing this stuff in. As far as, you know, application of these filler primers, you always want to go light, especially early on. Uh, you want the primer to kind of grab onto something. Big mistake a lot of people use is you just cake this stuff on. That is one thing you don't want to do with filler primer. So this whole application here, it's going to be multiple light coats. Nothing's going to be super heavy. Uh, towards the end, we are going to do a torture test and cake this stuff on and really see if any of these you know, do hold up. But we're going to follow suit here and apply it the way it should be. Very light coats. So first we're going to be starting with the Rust-Oleum, put a couple coats on, and then we're going to do the same thing with the Bondo filler primer. Spraying the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1, uh, my initial thoughts or opinions on this is it comes out heavy and thick, um, which you may think is good and it may think you may think that's what you want in a filler primer, but especially with a water-based one, you just got to be careful because uh, it can run very easily. Um, like I said, it's just, it comes out heavy and you have to kind of learn how to spray this the right way in order to not get run. So um, it wasn't my favorite to spray. I can see why some people like it because it does go on so thick and they, that's maybe what they think is good, but uh, it just stays very wet. It's very heavy. Just you, you have to just learn how to spray it the right way. It does seem to have a, a decent filling ability. You can see from the from the model here that it looks like it's definitely uh, filling in those PLA lines. However, it just stays very wet and, and almost gummy to a degree, which I really didn't like. So overall, the Rust-Oleum filler primer, uh, it does spray very thick, but you don't really have a ton of control of the flow on it. It just comes out fast and heavy. It does lay even, it just stays wet. So overall, I'm giving it a rating of six. All right, the Bondo filler primer. So this is the lacquer based filler primer. Uh, it comes out very light, which I personally like. Um, some people may not like it because like I said, they want more of that heavy instant gratification spray of filler primer, but you really don't want to do that with, you know, with primers or really with anything, you know. I like it because you can apply very light coats and it dries almost 
I don't wanna say instantaneously, but it dries really quick. So the chances of this running, the chances of this pitting or anything like that is very little. I like doing just small fanning light coats and just keep going back and back and back. And that's what I did with it. So it is applied a little bit differently. However, what's amazing about this is Literally, I sprayed this, put the can down, and picked it up, and it was completely dry. Um, it still does a good job uh, filling. Obviously, this particular boot did have some deep defects, and we'll see down the road how it ends up filling it, but completely dry within seconds, which is absolutely amazing, which just is gonna show that it's gonna be able to be sanded, and it's gonna cure and be painted even faster. So I definitely like that about the Bondo. You gotta spend a little bit more time spraying it, but super quick dry time, and I really like that. So overall, the Bondo Filler Primer was a nice little experience there. It sprays very even and finer, so you do have to do more coats, but it has great control. Dries almost instantly, no running. Uh, like I said, better control of this, so I'm giving this a total score of eight. The Duplicolor 2-in-1. I thought this was gonna spray just like the Bondo Filler Primer, but it didn't. Actually, out of all of them, this was one of my favorite ones the way it sprayed so you can see here it's coming out thick but not too thick so it wasn't heavy you know like the rust-oleum where it's almost like you're losing control but it's not coming out super super light i was really just able to kind of adequately spray it and it covered the whole boot and it was really nice it did stay wetter so it didn't have that instant drying like the bondo but it wasn't soaked and saturated like the rust-oleum so um, like I said, I just like the way that this fanned out and the coverage area. I still felt like I had really good control. I definitely did like the way that this uh, Duplicolor filler primer sprayed. It does come out a little bit thicker, but not too thick. It lays even, great control. It does stay wetter, but it doesn't run. Medium dry time, giving it a rating of a seven. Okay, Duplicolor refinish series. So this one doesn't quite spray as heavy as the two-in-one. It sprays similar to the Bondo, but not as light. So again, you just kind of have to do more coats. You can see me doing a couple uh, couple different layers here, but still really good control. Um, it wasn't super wet. It didn't run and you know anything like that. Um, it still had that wet or dry time though. So this is a straight lacquer base, um, but it definitely didn't dry as quick as the Bondo filler primer. So uh, not quite sure why, but uh, this one took a little bit longer to dry than the Duplicolor two in one but overall uh i like the way it sprayed it was still still had more pros than cons overall the duplicolor refinish it lays finer and spread out but you still have really good control no runs it does stay a little bit wetter so it's got a medium dry time overall i'm giving the duplicolor refinish a score of 6.5 the krylon two in one filler primer so this stuff here i have mixed feelings on um it has a nice fanning spray to it. It's not as, it's not like a sniper shot, like the, uh, like the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1. So it does fan out. However, it just comes out heavy and it comes out fast. Um, I wasn't really a fan of how it sprayed. Um, right here, what I'm trying to show you is how I'm already getting run. So I was trying to go really light and it was already starting to run. So this stuff, you know, it being water-based, it comes out heavy, it comes out thin and I was getting a lot of runs on this stuff. So, you know, aside from the availability and the price point, I'm looking at this. I mean, this thing is coming out and it's soaking wet. It just comes out super thick. You can see from the from the shot right there, it is just absolutely saturated. And what you gotta understand is with these water-based filler primers, if they don't fully cure, you're gonna have issues with paint. So you can see that there's runs there on the side. Uh, there were runs on the front and just how heavy, how thick and how wet it stayed. I just, I, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, it has what seems to be decent filling ability, but you know, it, it's just absolutely soaked and I just, I, I couldn't get over it. I had to leave the boot down for about three minutes before I could pick it up. You could see how there's that little run right there. And when filler primers gum up and then we try to level that stuff down and it's not fully dry, we know what happens. It gums up, it gouges the filler primer and then you're kind of going back to square one. So uh, it took a long time to dry. You can see how the top of that boot is still wet like i said it seemed like it has decent filling abilities just for doing a single you know sand on this and then filling it but i i can't get over how wet and how saturated it stayed that's all i can say so overall the two in one uh krylon um it lays very heavy and sporadic you have limited control it runs easy and it stays wet for a very very long time so due to all those i'm giving it a rating of a four
All right, and lastly, the Rust-Oleum filler primer. So this is just the straight filler primer, not the two-in-one. Um, it's pretty much identical to the Rust-Oleum two-in-one. Uh, it sprays and lays pretty much the same. It's more of a concentrated spray. Like I said, it comes out heavy, and there's really no different in the way, it, uh, you know, the control and everything is the same. I feel like you're kind of limited. You have to be careful because if you spray it, you know, concentrate on one area too much, you're going to get runs. Uh, it still stays very wet, which, you know, I'm not really thrilled about, and I don't really like that with water-based filler primers, because as I stated, if they don't fully cure, when you put paint on top, you can have a lot of reactions and a lot of issues. So my experience with the Rust-Oleum filler primer is pretty much the same as the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1. Uh, as far as performance and everything, when you get to spraying it, it does lay thick. It does lay even. Um moderate control uh, no runs it just stays wet longer and there's definitely going to be a longer dry time so overall based on that i'm giving it a rating of a six so now that all the pieces have been sanded and have a couple coats of filler primer what i did is i allowed them the proper dry time based on the manufacturer's recommendations and now we're going to get into doing some sanding on them and see how they do so the sanding test. For this test, I used both just basic hand sanding with a sanding tool, and I also did use a DA sander. 220 is all we needed, and we're starting with Rust-Oleum. So with the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1, uh, it does have low dust when you sand it. I guess you could say it sands easy. However, it feels very gummy, and it gets gouged up very easily by, uh, by sandpaper, by 220. So I don't know if a lighter sandpaper will fix that. We will check in the second test, but it just leaves a ton of residue on the sandpaper, which slows down the whole process, gouges it up. All I could say is it feels very gummy. Even though it's dry, it's just a very soft filler primer. Wasn't really a fan of this product, you know, whatsoever. It has the longest dry time, which we'll cover some more, but I didn't like the way it felt gummy. It does have low dust, but it gums up the sandpaper, slows down the whole process. Not really too crazy about this, giving it a four. Bondo filler primer. So this here sands down super easy. 220 knocked it down very efficiently, saved me a ton of time and it was super smooth. I couldn't imagine when you go up to 320, 400, 600, just how smooth you can get this. It just reacts so well with the sandpaper. No clumping, whether I used the DA or by hand, there was no residue, there was no gouging. It didn't feel soft like Rust-Oleum. Only downside was there was a little bit more dust uh, than some of the other filler primers, but the whole sanding, it was absolutely great. No complaints on this whatsoever. Uh, sands very easy, it'll save you a ton of time. A uh, little bit dusty, no clumping, super smooth and everything's all done. I'm giving this overall a nine. All right, Duplicolor 2-in-1. This one sanded down very fast too. It was uh, pretty efficient. Uh, 220 knocked it down, started filling in all those PLA lines and everything. There was a little bit of light gouging, but I'm confident that would be removed with a follow-up of 320 or 400. Uh, a little bit less dusting than Bondo, which was nice. Uh, did not clump up the sandpaper whatsoever. Left it still very smooth, uh, pretty much ready for the next stage. So overall, I did enjoy my experience with the Duplicolor. Uh, it's very efficient, it sands fast, no clumping, some light gouges, no big deal, mild dust. Overall, I'm giving this one an eight. Prylon 2-in-1. So this is actually a pretty uh, decent filler primer here. Sands down pretty good. Um, it does leave some light gouges, but again, I'm confident that with a follow-up sanding 320-400, it'll level those out. The filler primer does feel a little bit a little bit chunky or a little bit gummy, um, and that's to be expected with a water-based filler primer. But despite that, did not gum up the sandpaper. Uh, it still sanded pretty easy. It did leave some light gouges, which will be removed with a 320 or a 400 sand. But overall, not really too bad of an experience with uh, with the Krylon on the sanding here. Uh, a little bit of buildup, it sands easy, does feel gummy, low dust, some light gouges, which like I said, I think they'll go away. Overall, I'm giving this a rating of a 6.5. Duplicolor refinish series. So uh, sanded really good, really efficient. Uh, wasn't really a ton of dust. Um, there was some very, very, very minimal gouging, which I know will be removed with a follow-up sanding of 320 or 400. Uh, I like this experience though. It was pretty quick. Uh, definitely a time saver, very efficient. Did not gum up the pad whatsoever. Absolutely great. So really liked my experience here with the Duplicolor refinish. Sands nice and easy and fast. No clumping, low dust, minimal gouging. Giving this an overall rating of an eight. Rust-Oleum filler primer. So this was a very similar situation to the two-in-one. Uh, it did sand down relatively easy and there was low dust. However, it got gouged 
by the sandpaper. It felt gummy. The sandpaper clumped up. Not as bad as the two-in-one, but that still did delay the whole process. So overall, a very similar situation to the two-in-one. Uh, it felt gummy when you sanded it. It clumps up, delays the process. Lower dust, which is good, but it gouges very easy. Overall, I'm giving this a five. All right, so here we are after round one. Some interesting things. Uh, in these tests here and we're going to go over them momentarily but what we're going to do is kind of one by one grade these and rate these and see some of the pros and cons and how these filler primers lay on the PLA part so far. All right, inspecting the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1. So it actually does a pretty good job of filling in. It does leave the surface relatively smooth, uh, although it does gouge from the sandpaper. And the clumping of the sandpaper and even the clumping on the model here is really what is, is worrisome to me. You know, I question, is this primer fully cured? Am I going to have issues when I put paint on there? You know, some of these deep defects that you're seeing, um, those would have to get filled in with a filler or a putty, so I can't hit on the filler primer for that. Um, overall, it's, it's, it's not too bad. I'm still not a fan of the way it sprays. It comes out very heavy and with a water-based filler primer. Like I said, that can be worrisome, but overall, I see why people like this product. It's readily available. You can go to Lowe's, Walmart, wherever, and pick it up. Um, it's not too heavy on the wallet. It's priced fair. Uh, I think the reason why most people have issues with this is because they're not waiting long enough. You know, this needs two to four hours in between coats. So if you can put that time in and can wait that long, hey, this might be a great product for you. You know, I said, it does a pretty decent job of, of filling. I just don't like the whole process, the gumming, the clumping. Not really a fan of it, but you know, overall it does do a pretty good job. It does what it says. So I'm gonna give Rust-Oleum 2 and 1 a 7. All right, inspecting the Bondo filler primer. So this does really do a good job of, of filling in. Uh, the surface is super smooth. I, as I stated, it sands very easy. It's definitely a time saver. Um, and it does sand so easy, you can kind of see how some of that PLA is leaching through. And you might say to yourself, well, you're just stripping off all your work that you did. You know, yes and no. You can see how the lines there are being filled in and that's what's the most important thing. Um, you don't want to load filler primer up to where you've got layers and layers and layers and then you're losing definition or filling in detailed lines that you need. You know, this stuff here, it doesn't go on super heavy. The surface is left so smooth just from 220, it's crazy. Um, it very controlled when you spray it, as I stated, it being lacquer based, it dries super quick. So yeah, you do have to do two or three coats, but it's almost instantaneous. There's no wait time. And you can see here from the model just how smooth and precise it looks just after spraying it, you know. Obviously, there's still some of those deep defects uh, similar to the Rust-Oleum where you need glazing putty or, or uh, you know, a body filler to fix those. But overall, you know, I mean, the model just, just from uh, around the sanding, and a couple coats of, of filler primer, it's already doing its job, you know, just from one pass. So overall, I really do like the way this reacts. It sands super easy, does a really good job filling. Overall, I'm giving it an eight. All right, the Duplicolor 2-in-1. So very similar experience to the Bondo filler primer as it sands very easy, uh, very efficient, and it just kind of sands away the residue that you don't need and leaves behind what you do. Uh, so help filling in those PLA lines, but uh, very smooth, uh, hitting it with 220, uh, very minimal to no gouging, and you can even see some of the self-filling abilities on the toes. Those really weren't sanded too much, so pretty good on the sanding and filling aspect. Uh, I like the way this one sprayed the most, uh, still good control. It comes out a little bit wet, but as long as you got a painting tent or something, you should be good. So I definitely like the control and, you know, just looking at the filling ability here, and it's crazy to, to think that this is just from a filler primer, and this is kind of sloppy sanding on my part. You know, this is this was a test to see how well it fills. And I think this one does a really good job. You know, uh, the spray ability, you know, how you can have good control of the spray. Um, it sands really good, nice and easy. There's no major gouging. Uh, these are very intricate, you know, areas here, but still filling in pretty good. So overall, I'm gonna give the Duplicolor a 7.5. All right, so the Krylon 2-in-1 going over this, uh, it filled in pretty good, you know. Um, does a pretty good job. Uh, the sanding was relatively painless. Um, it did leave some sanding marks behind with the 220, but that's to be expected with a water-based filler primer. Uh, but overall, you know, it did a pretty good job. No major dusting, no clumping, no major issues to report. Uh, but you have to consider how, you know, detailed and how eccentric this boot is. And it's doing a pretty good job of filling in those defects and getting rid of them. Not really a fan with the way it sprays. Like I said, it sprays really heavy. Um, I would definitely give yourself some extra dry time on this just based how wet and saturated the model stays. But 
overall, I mean, look at the filling here. It, it's not doing a bad job. Uh, it's almost like Duplicolor 2-in-1's uh, twin brother here. You know, uh, that top part, you can see we haven't really sanded, but still the natural filling abilities are coming out. But doing a good job. I mean, that's a pretty clean, pretty smooth area there where we were able to get the, uh, the sandpaper on and sand it down. So still some big defects, but, you know, for a water-based filler primer, not too bad. Um, and like I said, it's a very detailed model. So overall, the sanding and filling ability on the Krylon 2-in-1, I'm giving it a 7. Duplicolor refinish series. So this, once again, uh, sanded down relatively easy and did a good job of filling in what it needed to. Uh, again, it wasn't leaving a ton of product behind, which I have stated before. You don't really want that. You don't want tons of layers and layers and layers and layers of filler primer. You want it to fill in where it needs to and then basically just sand away uh, you know what you don't the access and that's what it's doing and it did a, a fairly good job left the surface relatively smooth uh, there was minimal to no gouging from the sandpaper which is always a plus so a pretty efficient process uh, again this piece was a little bit uh, beat up it's got some deep defects in it as far as spraying goes a little bit different than the two-in-one uh, came out a little bit lighter uh, not as light as the bondo filler primer but again very controllable very easy lacquer based so if you need to do that quick second coat no running no drips nothing like that as far as filling ability it's it's looking pretty good so this piece did like i said have some deep defects there was a clog in the nozzle here so that's what all those little random little dots are and we'll see how well it fills in the second part of this test but overall uh it's sanding down pretty efficiently low dust nothing too crazy uh pretty good job so on this sanding filling ability for the duplicolor refinish 7.5 Rust-Oleum filler primer. So pretty similar to the two-in-one. However, uh, I actually prefer this over the two-in-one. Um, it still does feel a little bit gummy. There's still that low dusting, uh, but it doesn't get gouged as easily as the two-in-one does. It also, it doesn't build up quite as much. There's still a little bit of buildup on the sandpaper, a little bit on the model, but not as bad. Also, what I notice is when you sand it, it actually takes off that access, kind of like the other filler primers. It doesn't just clump and clump and clump and build up. So I actually prefer using the filler primer versus the two-in-one. Spraying is identical. It just, it comes out hot and heavy, you know, so you got to get that control down. But again, it's, I see why people use it. Um, it's readily available. It does not do a bad job filling. I'm just not a fan of the wait time and how it sands. I question if it will be ready for paint. If it's not fully cured, is it going to create frying? Is it going to create a reaction with the paint? So that's really the only issue I have with the Rust-Oleum. But overall, it didn't do too bad of a job filling. This piece was pretty beaten up. So overall, it's sanding and filling ability. I'm giving it a 7. All right, so now that we've done the initial tested and kind of rated and graded all of these filler primers, let's take a look at the leaderboard and see where all these filler primers stand and see what's ahead for the next test in round two. All right, starting things off in sixth was Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 filler primer with an average score of 6.5. Next in fifth place was Rust-Oleum filler primer with an average score of 6.75. In fourth place was Krylon 2-in-1 filler primer with an average score of 6.9. In third place was Duplicolor refinish series with an average score of 7.4. Uh, in second place was Duplicolor 2-in-1 filler primer with an average score of 7.5. And the winner for round one and so far ahead in our leaderboard was Bondo filler primer with an average score of 7.9. All right, everyone. Well, that is it. That is the conclusion of part one, but don't worry, we're not finished. This video was, like I said, basically kind of like an icebreaker getting into doing some early on testing based on the models that we had of some very popular filler primers. Hopefully it started to open your eyes a little bit. Uh, I know part two uh, will do even more. I know I mentioned that a lot of different things in the video and I will reiterate those and kind of combine everything together. And like I said, we're gonna crown a winner of what my opinion of the best filler primer is that you can get. Early on, we seen, you know, Bondo performing real good. Duplicolor, that was a new one in my book, uh, you know, working very well. Might have been a shocker to some people with rust -only. It might not have been, but again, it's not over. We're not saying that uh, positions can't change and ranks can't change. We're gonna do a lot more in phase two. So in phase two or test two, what we're gonna do is 
Uh, we're going to really test a lot of just self-filling ability of these primers, really just spraying them and just seeing how well they fill. Uh, we're going to dig deeper into wait time and cure time, especially versus what the manufacturers say. A lot of times manufacturers say wait this time and you should really wait that time. So we're going to do a lot of things with uh, wait time and cure times, how soon you can sand them, when you should, when you shouldn't. We're also going to dig into a little bit of chemical composition. Uh, I am going to dig up some MSDS sheets, let you know the ingredients in these filler primers so you can understand why they work the way that they do. Also, we're going to do the torture test. Let's beat the snot out of these things and see if any of them can bounce back. So part two is going to be a little bit longer. Uh, it's going to have more information. It's going to have more of me talking. It's going to have more of me doing this with my hands maybe. Uh, but part two is going to be, like I said, a little bit more informative. Uh, I just kind of wanted to get the ball rolling on this. A lot of people were asking about it. So like I said, hopefully it's given you some information. Hopefully it's opened your eyes. I know part two is going to be even better. It's almost done. So I'm trying to get it edited out for you guys right away. But if you did enjoy this video, feel free to drop me a comment. If you like all things 3D printing, cosplay, Star Wars, Marvel, maybe a little bit of Disney, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I still have the motorized face plates that I have to do. I still have to do the Bondo filler primer giveaway. A lot of videos are on the corner. Just be patient, trust me, they're coming. But if you like any of the stuff you've been seeing, any of my builds, any of the stuff I've been hinting, make sure you click that subscribe button because I got a lot more fun stuff just around the corner. That's it for now, guys. I'm gonna go finish up part two so I don't keep you guys waiting too long. Like I said, let me know what you think of the video. And until we get into part two of the tests, DW signing off, later.